you know what time it is. Football season, Q4. Time to close out another year of growth and prep for the next year of revenue. To bring in more businesses Q4 and beyond, you need HubSpot Sales Hub. With a smart prospecting workspace, deal management suite, and AI-powered apps, you can take total control of your operation to generate more leads and land more sales. And when you pair a sales hub with other hubs in HubSpot Smart CRM, your team will be on the same page across the entire customer journey. Leads won't slip through the cracks, and data is connected across marketing, sales, and operations, so you can better measure your impact on the bottom line. Stop sticking to the same old strategies and start closing more deals, because the best time to score is Q4. Make the switch to HubSpot Sales Hub at HubSpot.com slash sales. Howdy, folks. It is Thursday, June 22nd. I'm Jacob Cohen here with Juliet bennett Ryla, and you are listening to The Hustle Daily Show. Today, Domino's turns pizza delivery on its head. Again. And Juliet's got the story in a bit. But before that, let's talk about what else is happening in the world of business and tech. Let's get crack leg. All right, Juliet. So Amazon had a big announcement about Prime Day. And so did the FTC. What is happening here? Yeah, there's a lot going on with Amazon today. It announces annual Prime Day sale. That's going to be July 11 and 12 this year. And this time they're offering Prime members invite-only deals, which is, I guess, kind of cool if you're a Prime member and you like buying things on Amazon. It's always a really big day for Amazon or a couple of days now. Last year, they got $11.9 billion in sale on Prime Day. And uh, they may need that because uh, they got a couple of enemies out there. The FTC is suing Amazon, claiming that it deceived customers into signing up for recurring Amazon Prime subscriptions. The FTC is basically saying it's it's made it hard to buy certain items without Prime, and then that leads people to accidentally sign up for Prime without knowing it. And then, of course, it's a recurring subscription, so it's a whole big thing. And then it makes it intentionally hard to cancel the thing you didn't want in the first place. Amazon is currently denying all of that. And meanwhile... Senator Bernie Sanders, who heads the Senate's Committee on Health, Education, Labor and Pensions, is launching an investigation into worker safety at Amazon's warehouses. In a letter that he wrote to CEO Andy Jassy, he gave him until July 5 to explain the company's injury rates. Amazon is disagreeing with all of that as well. So big day for Amazon. Big day for Prime Day. There'll be two Prime Days, I guess, one online and one in court. Yep. (laughs) What else is going on today? Well, in other news, one thing I've been very fascinated by is the early 2000s novelty called Slam Ball. You might Mm. remember it, you might not. Basically, it's basketball mixed with a little bit of, I don't know, handball, hockey, and football, and on trampolines, too. Oh, wow. (laughs) So it's quite the sport. And it will actually return to the national stage after inking a two-year broadcast deal with ESPN. N, which you probably have heard of. Now, according to front office sports, Slam Ball's return was accelerated in part by a viral social media trend that saw the hashtag bring back Slam Ball get more than (laughs) 200 million views. And investors, including a 76ers co-owner and the CEO of Fanatics, recently participated in an $11 million Series A funding round for the company. So I think the trick, honestly, here is just going to be figuring out how to keep the sport relevant once the novelty wears off. Mm Because, you know, I'm just not sure how popular can stay. Something like spike ball or pickleball is great because anyone can really go do that and afford it for the most part. But most people don't have access to a trampoline basketball court. Yeah. So (laughs) this seems like the kind of game I would see in a dystopian movie where people have to play a weird sport to the death. Like, that's what this <laughs> feels like to me. Yes, yes. Sounds about right. Also, moving along, Uber is cutting 200 people on its recruiting team as it looks to cut costs and right size for what it calls low attrition rates. And that's according to a memo addressed to staff. The company has more than 32,000 corporate workers. So the cuts account for less than 1% of total staff, but 35% of Uber's recruiting team, according to the Wall Street Journal. Meanwhile, today, I, an AI Senator Majority Leader Chuck Schumer unveiled his legislative framework for regulating artificial intelligence, saying Congress must join the AI revolution or 
really miss out on a chance to regulate it properly. On Tuesday, by the way, President Biden met with a panel of AI thought leaders in San Francisco and said, you know, we'll see more technological change in the next 10 years than we've seen in the last 50. And lastly, the Financial Times reported that TikTok is testing an Amazonian e-commerce strategy with its UK users, creating a new section on the app called Trendy Beat, where the company promotes and sells a range of best-selling items it also makes itself, while also allowing other vendors to sell through TikTok shop. Now, if this takes off, I could see, and now we're going full circle, I could see there being some regulatory challenges here Mm -hmm. as Amazon is faced with its Amazon Basics lines. But we will see. And with that, let's get to today's main story. Talking pizza. Let's get to it. So, Juliet, as you were telling us earlier, there's a Seinfeld episode in which Elaine Mm -hmm. dismayed that a Chinese restaurant will not deliver to her apartment because she lives across the street from the boundary of the restaurant's delivery area pretends to live in a janitor's closet across the street so she can get the delivery. But Domino's, on the other hand, it appears no longer even needs an address to deliver pizza. What is that about? Uh, That is correct. Now, Elaine did not have GPS because Elaine (laughs) was living in the 90s. I was somewhere where that like this exact episode was on. And it was it was funny because she's like, I will just I will cross the street and I will meet you across the street. And they were like, no. And then she tried to pretend <laughs> that she lived at the apartment across the street and they wouldn't. They took the food back from her because she could not open the door. of That's the hilarious. They were very strict. <laughs> but if Elaine wanted to order Domino's today, she could obviously do it mobily. And now she could do it from the street. She doesn't even need to have an address. This is Domino's new pinpoint delivery. It lets you order pretty much anywhere as long as place you're ordering is within the Domino's delivery zone, which you probably are in like multiple zones because there's a lot of Domino's out there. (laughs) And there is a place that a car can pull over. So like middle of the jungle, Appalachian Trail, no. But if you're at like a park or maybe the beach, yes. Very cool. And how does this work exactly? So it works with Google Maps. Essentially, you go to the Domino's app, you choose pinpoint delivery, and you're like, oh, I'm right here. And you drop a pin. And then just like when you order it to your house, you can track it via the app, the text, GPS, whatever. And then when the driver gets there, you will have provided a physical description of yourself, like what you're wearing. And then you can also activate like a a domino signal, much like a bat signal in a way. That turns the screen of your phone into a giant Domino's logo, and then you can like hold it up and be like, I'm right here. Smart. And as long as you can meet the driver at the pickup location within four minutes, you have four minutes. Boom. Pizza. Pizza at the park. Very nice. Very nice. We'll take it. So the innovation here is that you you don't have to be in someone's house or an apartment to order pizza. You can really be anywhere in a city, probably. Yeah. And I think this is pretty cool, if only because... I have gone to a lot of birthday parties in the park and sometimes people bring pizza. And you know what I'm not going to do? Yeah. I'm not going to take like three pizzas on the bus. Like <laughs> no. you got to bring the pizza to me. <laughs> but it makes the bus smell very nice. <laughs> yeah. You know what's going to happen? Everyone's going to be like, can I have a slice of pizza? And because I'm nice, yeah. I will have given away all of my pizza before I even okay. get to the park. So now you don't have to do that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I think Domino's like is... Domino's, in my opinion, is one of the the best companies when it comes to actually getting food delivered. It has all these innovations. Like it started online mobile ordering back in 2007. Then it added its Domino's tracker in 2008, which is like a fun little thing that you can watch on your phone. Some people say that it doesn't work. I think that you, if you want to believe in the Domino's tracker, you can believe in the Domino's tracker. It's also tested robot delivery. It had autonomous cars in 2021 by Neuro delivering pizzas. It tested drone delivery in the UK in 2013. I read something about it having pizzas with ovens in them at one point. Like it's, it just is always really trying to amp up its delivery strategy. The problem right now, though, is that during the pandemic, when we were stuck in our houses, everyone loved delivery. That's all we did was have things delivered to us or we were out doing the delivering. Now, across all restaurants, delivery is down. And for Domino's, it's down 2.1% in the last quarter. Another thing that Domino's has to deal with that it didn't have to deal with back in 2007 is that now we can get pretty much anything delivered to us anytime. Like I remember you could pretty much only get 
pizza and maybe if you had like a good Chinese or Thai place delivered, nothing else. Now I can like anything I can get delivered to me. So Domino's is really trying to get that customer base back. And uh, what they found is that people care more about convenience than anything else. And what is more convenient than just being like, I'm stuck on the side of the road next to my broken down <laughs> car. But you know, it would be really cool if I had a Domino's pizza right now. Yeah, I, I honestly am not sure if there's anything more convenient than that exactly. when it comes to pizza. Uh-huh. So we'll have to try this out. Maybe let everyone know how it goes. Yeah, hello, would, would love to. Love a Domino's pizza truly anytime. <laughs> And bada bing, bada boom, that's going to do it for us today, folks. Thanks for tuning in to the Hustle Daily Show. We're a proud part of the HubSpot Podcast Network. Our editor today is Ezra Trupiano. Our executive producer is Darren Clark. We've got a lot more tech and business coverage in our newsletter, which you can sign up for at thehustle.co slash email. Hope you have an awesome Thursday. Almost done with the week. Have a great one. See you tomorrow. I want to tell you about another podcast brought to you by the HubSpot Podcast Network, the audio destination for business professionals. This one is called My First Million, hosted by Sam Parr and Sean Puri. My First Million features famous guests like Alice Hermosi, Sophia Amoruso, and Hassan Minaj sharing their secrets for how they made their first million and how to apply their learnings to capitalize on today's business trends and opportunities. So for example, in a recent episode, Sean discusses how his former intern, went from making $30,000 a year to $40,000 in one minute by taking one big bet. And today, he's a 22-year-old millionaire, thanks to a couple early investments. Want to know more? You can listen to My First Million wherever you get your podcasts.